So hey everyone, today I really wanted to do a video talking about all of the um, books that I read in February. If you would like to see everything that I read in January, um, I have a playlist now for all of my monthly reads. I'm doing this every month um, as long as I can do it and I actually do read things. And um, yeah, I'm just taking kind of chill today um, because I'm not feeling the best as you guys know. And um, so some of these videos, I'll just be my bare-faced self in my pajamas um, because that's how I feel right now. And um, Merle is here with me too. He's not very happy. Well, <laughs> you're right. He's okay. He can curl up there and um, we can talk about all of the books I read. So the majority of these books were all, I think every single one of them were a library book. So I don't have anything physical to show you. Um, and one of the books that I read, it's actually it. You're able to read it in a PDF. So I will link that below for you. So I'm just looking at my Goodreads on here. Um, if you if you have a Goodreads and you want to follow me, definitely do. Because I love it and I use it a lot. And I like to follow everyone on there. Um, yeah, so the first thing I read was actually, it was on the 1st of February. And it was All You Zombies by Robert A. Heinle, Heinlein, Heinlein, Heinlein. Okay, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but your, the information will be here and the information will be down below. We will call him Robert. So Robert seems to be a very known author for kind of a sci-fi um, related books. Um, I've probably come across some of his stuff and so have you at some point, but just didn't know it was him. Um, I have actually requested one of his books and I have it at the moment so that might be a red one for next month if you want to check that out if you want to see what my opinions are are on that um but this is a short story called all you zombies and the reason I came across this it this is a long story okay we're just gonna get into it quickly before I ramble on too much but basically um, one night Steve went to bed because he used to go to bed early because he's working. I stayed up and um, a film was on. A film was just left on whatever station the TV was on. And um, I just started watching it because the main actress, I completely forget her name, I apologise. But um, I she did look familiar to me but she's also kind of unusual looking. Um, she has very hooded eyes. And the other thing about it was she was playing both... A female and a male character I was just I was like I just kind of seen the male character and I was like oh that's also her you know she was basically playing two different characters one male one female which I just repeated myself basically and I just thought that it was very unusual and I was like what's going on and then I saw that Ethan Hawke was in it as well and he was the barman so the actress is well, she's obviously is a she, she's an actress, you know, but in the movie she's dressed up as a man, as a, a male, and she's even kind of putting on a deeper voice too as well. And um, she's telling this story to Ethan Hawke. Now, I can't really say much else about it because then it's kind of going to be spoiled. But I watched the movie and it ended and I was like, what in the world did I just watch? What was that? Like not in a bad way. It was, it was so good. Like I gave it five stars because it blew my mind. Like and that doesn't usually happen very often where I watch something and I'm just like, what was that? And then when it was ending, I realized it said based on the short story or whatever um, by Robert, and um, I was like, oh, I have to read that. So I found the PDF just online because it's very, it's fairly old. It was published in the 60s, I think. Actually, it might have been just the end of the 50s. And it was called All You Zombies. And I read it and it was pretty much the exact same as the film, only the film added another little element into it, of which I think was actually a good thing to add because it helped you kind of it was just a good story. It helped the story. It did. Both are brilliant. Both are the exact same, bar this one little bit. And it's it's basically a paradox. That's what the story is. It's about time travel and it's a paradox. It is insane. Now I'm I'm good with time travel. I know some people um find it hard to understand time travel. And I I 
<laughs> that sounds, I don't know, but, but some people just, I don't know, they can't kind of comprehend it. But I'm actually really good with time travel and I'm really good with the different variations and type and theories of time travel. I'm totally okay with it and I can accept it. It doesn't, I don't know, my mind accepts it. If it's this theory, that theory, you know what I mean? And the same goes for multi-universes and stuff like that. But I know some people have trouble with time. This is one of them that completely like blew my mind where I was just like, I'm having a real hard time with this. So if you, if you're bad with time, I wouldn't, <laughs> I mean, I, I think everyone should watch it, but you're going to be, you're going to be very confused. It was amazing and it was so well done. And I honest to God don't know how they managed to translate this story into a film because I wouldn't even know where to begin. But they did it and it's an amazing film. Now, at first I couldn't figure out which would you do, watch the film or read the short story. I have come to the conclusion that I think you're better off to watch the film first. It's called Predestination, I'm pretty sure. Ethan Hawke is in it. It's from 2014 or something like that. I never even heard of it before at all. I've never heard anything about it. I never heard anybody saying anything. Does that say Slytherin? I am not Slytherin. But yeah, um, before you read the PDF, if you have any way to get the film, I do think watch that first because it's just visually you're seeing it and it's the exact same story. So it's kind of, it's told the exact same way. So it's kind of like you're watching a film of the exact text of the book, if that makes sense, only with one little thing added in. And, and then read the PDF of All You Zombies. Again, because it's so short, if it was a long book, maybe, maybe then it would be better to read the book first. But it's just a little story and it was amazing and it blows my mind and everyone should read it and tell me what you think because oh my god so I requested another book of his um I think they're kind of all sci-fi and I think he does deal with paradoxes quite a lot so I'm very interested in this <laughs> um yeah it, it it's very interesting and very good so we'll move on so I picked up The World's Wife by um Carol Ann Duffy so um she is a poet so she writes poems I came across this because of another I was watching another video by a YouTuber um, who I linked below, but she was doing a video on Gabby Hanna's poetry. So I've been watching Gabby Hanna for a long time, but unfortunately there has been some recent kind of dramas and issues with her and stuff. So they were coming up a lot in my recommendations, but one of the things that came up was somebody talking about, um, I think it's Rachel Oates, Oates, I think that might be her name came up with a video about her talking about Gabby's poetry because she released a poetry book. Now, poetry is very subjective and everything like that, but the poetry book that Gabby Hanna has out is not the greatest. But in a lot of the videos she was referencing um, a poet named Carol Ann Duffy and I was very interested in reading some of her poems, especially, especially, especially for one specific poem called, um, called Mrs. Darwin. So I'm going to read um, Mrs. Darwin to you and kind of the reason why I liked it so much. But it's really short. It says, 7th of April, 1852, went to the zoo. I said to him, something about the chimpanzee over there reminds me of you. <laughs> and um, I loved it. It was so funny. And um, Rachel in her video was explaining, you know, which was explaining why it was so funny. But also that it was the wife who was like, you know, saying to Darwin, Look at that chimpanzee, kind of looks like you, you know, and then the theory of evolution and everything like that comes with it. So this is kind of the way a lot of her um, poems are like in it. Um, they're all to do with, they're all to do with wives, mothers, daughters, kind of things like that. And I just think they're very interesting. They're not um, kid friendly either, I should mention, like they are... Um, adult poems my favorite was that it was what was it the devil um yeah there there's kind of a series of poems within this book and it's called the devil's wife and um, they were my favorite I really liked them so yeah it's just it's a po it was hard to kind of review it as well because they're poems and they're I, I feel they're more subjective than even books because I don't I don't really know a lot about poems and how what way they're supposed to be written and stuff but um I did really enjoy 
that book and it was a fairly quick read as well and um, they're pretty straightforward as well like they're not too complicated or anything and um, like I said anyway I'll link that video below um, where she kind of reviews Gabby Hanna's poetry um, and kind of compares to some other people um, yeah anyway so the next book I read was The Bone Witch by Rin Ch Chubeco. Rin Chubeco. I'm sorry if I'm butchering that. I just I'm real bad with names. But yeah, this was this was an interesting book. So at the beginning I wasn't really into reading it and I, I kind of it was slow to start. But basically it's just it's set in like I hate when it's set in, in like olden times. But obviously it's not Earth, it's like somewhere else, kind of their olden times and to do with magic and stuff. Anyway, it's about um, T, who um, develops some witchy magic powers or whatever. And she um, gets sent to this place to practice it, basically. And the type of witch of which she is, which is the bone witch, um, is kind of people fear it quite a lot and it's kind of a lot of dark magic and stuff so it's an interesting story because the way that it's written is it's the older kind of T who is narrating kind of telling you the story basically of what happened to her and um I did find that it went on very long and though some of the details were explained far too much now there is a reason in the the why there's so much detail about the clothes they're wearing and I know that she you know writes in it saying that there's a reason why like you know she's so descriptive about it and everything like that but I still think there's just way too much detail um in it but I did really enjoy it and it was easy read once I got into it and easy to follow it wasn't dark enough I don't think but then again it is young adult so obviously I kind of understand it that way too and um yeah the story was interesting the characters are all pretty good like you know you can separate all the characters very easily like everyone everyone's different you know and that's good and um oh yeah the descriptions of the food was amazing um I, I think it was Iranian food um Iranian is that right um, from Iran basically um, because I was I was reading about the food and then I was like actually I want to google this and see what this food looks like and oh my god all the food looks absolutely delicious just oh yeah so I really advise you if you are reading it and the first mention of food um, just google the name of it and just have a look at it because I think that helps set up of the location a bit more as well so you kind of know what kind of setting you're in so I gave that four stars and I think it's a solid four stars. Okay, then I read, so then I read Sourdough by Robin um, Sloan. Um, so Sourdough was really, really interesting. Um, this one was um, recommended to me by my reading as well. I mean, not recommended specifically to me. I was just watching one of her videos and she talks about how much she looks his, loves this book and it's one of her favorites. And I said, well, I need to give it a read. You know, it is about sourdough. Um, like straight off the bat, it is about sourdough. Um, the main character, um, Lois, she's given a starter, basically, which is just the starter for a sourdough. If you don't know how sourdough is made, you need like the, uh, what is it? Is it like, is it like the yeast and water? And there's probably more stuff in it, but you need the starter to kind of, make the bread and you add the flour and stuff to it and then you can make you separate it and make some bread out of that blah 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 um it's really unusual basically she um is given this sourdough and i won't ruin even why she's given it because i think that's fun to you know to read about but she's given the sourdough and then she decides to sell it at a market and then this market is really unusual and modern and just really odd and then it's just a story about her kind of um you know her relationship with the characters within this um market and the relationship with the person that she gave who gave her the sourdough and it's just it's bizarre it gets bizarre but like in the best way and it's just i gave it five stars because it really really was an enjoyable read it was brilliant it was so quick the characters are really likable 
I really wanted to eat bread the whole time, um, even if there was any other food mentioned. And yeah, it was just, it's just a really nice book and it's just really odd, but in the best way. Like, it's not too odd. Like, you know, as you read it, you know, you're kind of accepted at everything and then you're like, oh yeah, that's, that's odd, but like, it's not too crazy. Um, and I highly recommend it to everyone. So then it was sad times. I read the last of Lock and Key. So I read Lock and Key Volume 6, Alpha and Omega. Um, this was this was brilliant. This was so good. It was a perfect end. It was really like the ending was sad but but really good. And it was just it was so well done. Um I love every character in it. I don't think there's a character I hate. Even the bad characters, like the bad guys and stuff, they're all so brilliant. Like, I just really, really enjoyed it. Um, we also, we just finished the TV series, which I, I didn't, honestly, I'm not a fan of the series. I find that it is definitely aimed towards kids. Um, whereas the book series, the graphic novel is not, it's definitely not for kids. Um, and I just, I don't know, I, lo I love this so much, I think it's really brilliant, so I do think if they were bringing it to screens, it's going to be hard to get it exact anyway, but it was enjoyable, the TV series, but if you in any way like the series, like even just as there's one little particular thing that you like about it, just maybe the keys, or just maybe the house, because the house looks amazing, they did a really good job with the house in the series, like it looks exactly like the house in the, um, comics but everyone should read this that's what I think As just in in relation to graphic novels in general I think it's one of the best I just think it's so good and um, I need to purchase all of them because I got them as library books um, that brings me on to which I'm just going to go on to now I didn't read this right after but I read Lock and Key Heaven and Earth so Lock and Key Heaven and Earth is not um, a continuation of the story. Basically, it's got a couple of stories in it that are related to the keys. So they're kind of like, they're stories from the past. There's one story with Bode, um, or Bodie and Tyler and Kinsey from the kind of original series that you're reading. But the other ones are short stories um, from kind of years ago to do with the house. And some of the keys and um, then the, at the very end there was some behind the scene photos of the they had pictures of them in the places that like um, gave them the idea for lock and key or whatever and um, I gave this five stars because I loved it I loved it just a little short stories I just love anything to do with it honestly um, they could release another one of these just with some little small short stories and I'd be happy enough this doesn't have the best rating at all but um, I disagree I think I think it's really good. So that's the end of my lock and key stuff. There is other ones with little short stories in and stuff. There might be one or two that I haven't read that maybe were Kindle editions or something like that. This Heaven and Earth one, I feel combined, definitely combined some of them that were going around as e-books. E so I'm not sure if I am missing any of them. I will have to look that up and just see. And I do think they're making more now, aren't they? Yeah, they might be making more lock and key now. But, um... Yeah, I just enjoy it all. Um, I really love it. So then I read Sadie. Sadie is by Courtney Summers. So this was another one that was recommended, I'm pretty sure, by my reading is odd. Um, I think she was the one that mentioned it. That I think she was the one that, that recommended it anyway. But um, Sadie was very interesting. Basically, it's about Sadie's sister um, gets murdered. And... Um, they don't like know who did it or anything, but then Sadie goes missing. So the book is, you're getting Sadie's um, narration of it basically. Um, she's telling the story, her story, but you're also getting a podcast type thing in the book. So it's written like a podcast. And um, it's really odd. I do think maybe the audio book might be really interesting because um, because it's it's like a podcast. Um, because of this setup, I did find it annoying that you fa like Sadie would do certain things, and then the podcast people are obviously um, investigating Sadie's um, where whereabouts and where she's been and stuff. So they're picking up that information after her, and then they're just repeating it. So they're kind of repeating information that you just 
already know and that was a bit annoying and that's kind of just to do with the setup the setup and the layout of it but it was interesting and I see what they were trying to do and it didn't take from it too much but um yeah I really I really did like it because it is it is kind of a true crime mystery thing and um you know it wasn't too unrealistic or anything like that I gave it four stars um, I will say that like trigger warning for abuse or anything like, like murder obviously and stuff like that you know it is a heavy book it's not fun like at all but it was still it was still enjoyable it was still well done like I mean not enjoyable in that sense but you know what I mean it was still a good read. I was worried about how it was going to end because a lot of people didn't seem to like the ending. I was looking at some of the good read reviews and um, the amount of people that didn't like the ending um, surprised me quite a lot because I loved the ending. I thought the ending was perfect. I don't think I would have liked it to have ended any other way. I'm not going to tell you obviously um, because that would spoil it but if you have read this book let me know what you thought of the ending um, and if you do eventually read it come back and tell me but um, yeah if you're a fan of true crime or true crime podcasts in particular I would give this um, a read and maybe possibly find the audiobook I'm not good with audiobooks at all at all I've tried my best I I cannot listen to audiobooks I don't know what it is I can listen to podcasts I can listen to podcasts all day um, but audiobooks I completely zone out and I, I'm like what happened I don't know um, I have to read books I can't you know I just can't do it but with this one I do wonder would I have been able to listen to it because it's set up like a podcast but yeah I recommend it. So the last thing I read was another comic it was Runaways Volume 3 that was yesterday so I got this in the library and I came and it was really thin and small and I thought maybe they gave me the wrong one but I think it was before I was getting hardbacks and it seemed a bit thicker but um yeah if if you get it and you think it's very small um don't worry it is the it is the right one it is volume three so the runaways are yeah it's a in, very interesting story I haven't read any of the past runaways so the setup is very well done like you're intro introduced to the characters in the other volumes pretty easily you know you can grasp it so there's a new character comes into this and I just while I don't know much about them um, it's Alex Wilder and he comes back into it and he's a character in it and um, yeah it's just basically about what happens when he comes back into it and um, I don't want to say much more obviously I don't want to spoil it and it is a bit shorter than other ones I'm pretty sure so um, there's not really much information I can run with but I really I do really enjoy these um, I gave it five stars because as I was reading it I just loved it and I want to know more about it it was the same with the second one um, an awful lot of people said that they didn't like the second volume as much as the first one which I thought it was the other way around each volume I, I read I, it's kind of getting better you know you're kind of learning more knowing more more is happening you're getting introduced to other characters other kind of monsters and evil people and just overall, yeah. And there's a character in it that is a Doombot. Um, he's my favourite. I absolutely love him. Um, he is a mood overall. <laughs> um, he's so good in it. So yeah, I can't wait to get the next one now. Um, I'm on hold for it. So I've been really enjoying reading The Runaways. And I do think about reading maybe the older comics. Um, just to see. So that is all of my books. That was eight books. Um, well, eight altogether. One of them was a short story. One of them was um, a book of poems. Three of them were actual books. And then three of them were kind of comic graphic novels. So it's not too bad, actually. I, I didn't do too bad. Um, I do feel like maybe I would have gotten more read, but... Um, you guys know all I've been going through. I'm actually reading a Stephen King book at the moment and I've hardly read any of it. It's Mr. Mercedes and um, it's not because obviously because when we talked about the book in the last um, monthly catch up. If you watch that you will see how much I hated a certain Stephen King book. Um, that's not the case for this one at all. Um, I have only read a little bit so I have like no judgment on it at all. It's just that I'm finding it very hard to hold the book. 
um, because it's kind of big and it's it's hard and if you're sore or anything it's hard to hold a goddamn book and read it um <laughs> it's sad times but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I'm just obviously recording on my phone, or my phone, yeah, and that. Um, I just wanted to do a more chill, relaxed one of these. Um, just let me know how I could make them better in future because I do find that they're not doing as well as my other videos. I am obviously going to keep continuing to do them because reading has kind of become a big part of what I'm doing. So I want to share that with you and also that's the kind of content that I like myself that I watch from other people's stuff but um yeah it's they're not getting as much views and stuff as my other videos. I know they're long too so that could be a reason but um yeah if you are like if you read you like books and stuff yourself please do let me know that you like these videos <laughs> and um, maybe even thinking about sharing them or sharing it to like um maybe a friend or friends that you know that like books or something um just so I know that they're enjoyable because um it can be a bit deflating when you kind of put a lot of effort into a video and then it's not really liked that much I mean not that this was a lot of effort it is a lot of effort and I have to think quite a lot and I have to get my thoughts across which you can see I struggle with quite a lot but um, yeah, any kind of sharing or that would be really, really, really um, appreciated. And um, yeah, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed, like I said. Um, Merle, do you wanna say bye? Merle? Merle? Do you wanna say bye bye? No, come here, look. Look. No, you're being stupid. <laughs> come here, come here, say goodbye. Say goodbye. <laughs> Bye. No, you're supposed to wave. Hang on. Bye. Okay. Okay. Ah! This is supposed to be my thumbnail. That's where all the books are supposed to go. Not you. <gasps> joking, Merle, joking, pal. No, I don't I don't want it. I don't want it.